parallax happens when you, the observer, are changing position, but the object you're looking at is stationary. When the observer moves, but the object doesn't, the object appears to move against the background. This appearance of movement is what we call parallax. So I've set up an environment here in which we can experiment with parallax. I've set up three colored candles at different distances from my position here. Those candles represent stars. Remember that the candles, the colored stars, are really the stars that we're paying attention to in this setup. They're colored just so that we can easily tell them apart from the background stars. We have a yellow nearby star, we have a red middle star, and then we have a blue distant star. And these Christmas lights that I've strung through this black pegboard are our background stars. These stars are extremely distant from us, the observer. We're talking thousands or hundreds of thousands of light years away. To demonstrate how we can use parallax to compare the distances to stars that we see in the night sky, I've set up this really simple little apparatus. What I've built here is a simple rotating stage that models the Earth's revolution around the sun. As Earth revolves around the sun, its position is changing. The maximum change in position takes place over six months, as in maybe when Earth moves from spring back over here to fall. Now I can simulate us looking out into space from Earth if I replace my globe with a camera. So I'll just get that set up right now. Now that I've got a camera set up in our position where Earth would be, I can actually simulate what we would see from Earth as Earth revolves around the sun. And I can actually do that sort of in real time with you. Now I'm going to shut off our sun just to cut out a lot of this extra glare. So I'm going to simulate an orbit of Earth revolving around the sun while we look at those three stars, those three colored stars that I have set up as those candles. So let's start. Our candles are located here, here, and there. This one is the closest candle, this one's in the middle, and that one's the farthest away. So I'm going to rotate the Earth around the sun from one end of its orbit to another, looking at those candles as they appear to move against the background stars. And I'm going to do it again. Let's make a full year here. Did you see that? It appears as though the colored stars, our candles, were moving against the background. The appearance of movement in these three stars is parallax, and we report parallax with a measurement that we call the parallax angle. The parallax angles of stars are extremely small, and so we measure these with a unit called arc seconds. There are 3,600 arc seconds in a degree, so an arc second is extremely small. For comparison, the angular diameter of the sun in the sky is around 1,800 arc seconds. But what about the different distances of our colored candles? Remember that the candles are different distances, and our background stars are extremely distant. Do we observe different amounts of parallax angles in these stars? You might have noticed that the distance between us and the star that we're looking at affects how much parallax we observe. We observe parallax in our colored stars, the candles, because they're closer to us. The most distant candle shows a small amount of parallax. The middle candle shows a little bit more parallax. And the very closest candle shows the largest degree of parallax. It appears to swing back and forth a lot against those background stars. In those extremely distant background stars, we observe no parallax. We would say that the parallax angle of those distant stars is too small to measure. It's effectively zero. So let me turn the sun on again, just for illustrative purposes here. So the reason that we observe different amounts of parallax in our three candles, the three colored stars, is because as Earth revolves around the sun, we're viewing these three stars at different angles. At this point in our orbit, we're viewing the stars from over here. But then, at this point in our orbit, we're viewing the stars from over here. This change in position from one end of our orbit to the other is what makes it appear as though our three candles are wobbling or moving against those background stars. And we notice that the closer the star, the more parallax we observe. Since our view of the closest star changes angle the most from one end of our orbit to the other, we measure a large parallax angle. But because the farthest star, the blue star, that angle doesn't change as much, 
we measure a smaller parallax angle.